in this segment we would like to talk about controlling cavitation in the Bosch Rexroth AA10 VSO axial piston pump. This is a very high dynamic, high dynamic response pump in the fact that it is controlled with oil pressurized oil internally. This is a cutaway that we use in our training institute here at Livingston and Haven. So I'm going to point out a couple of the things and if you do not understand how an axial piston variable volume pump works. You see right now in this condition we are pressure compensated and we're holding a constant pressure as the pump would turn and very little movement of the pistons. We are basically off stroke or zero flow but holding pressure as pressure compensation does. When this pump goes on stroke there is a demand for flow out of the pump. This pump moves in that direction and moves that far in 20 to 50 milliseconds depending on the displacement and size of the pump. That doesn't, that's pretty rapid. That's a good fast pump. So it comes on stroke. The problem being on the suction side, if you have replaced another brand pump or perhaps done a design where the suction line is marginal or the suction line may be a little longer than it should be, then you get cavitation. What is cavitation? Cavitation is if the pump does not fill when it gets ready to come on stroke and now it wants to fill oil as it comes around. What happens is some of the oil goes into vaporous form, comes around, gets pumped up to 3000 PSI, and then when it goes to the outlet, it kind of explodes. You can hear this inside of the pump, and uh, it, not only ours, but other axial piston pumps. It sounds like marbles rolling around inside of a number 10 empty tomato can, you know. It like, makes a loud noise or perhaps a, a quick burst from an automatic rifle. Uh, so it, it's uh, very obvious that you got something going on in your pump. So if you do have that con particular condition and you need to uh, fix it because that will cause short life for, the, for your pump. Now a little bit on how this one works. This is a cutaway of the control. This being then all of the control with all the parts in it. So we have cut it away. It has two, two uh, control spools in it. We are concerned just with the, this one, the pressure compensated spool. You can see that we take pressure from the outlet of the pump, bring it up to the control. It goes down into the stroking piston when the pressure overrides the spring and ports it, which moves the pump to compensate. Now, when we demand oil, that pressure falls. The spool moves to the left. Now we have return flow coming out of this port up, across, over, and down, and blue being the case of the pump where the control oil goes into the case and then returns to the reservoir through the return line. If you, will, if you could see real close, there is a threaded section in this control right there that would allow us to insert a little small M6 Grub, grub orifice screw. You obviously can't see the one millimeter hole that's in this particular one, but if we wanted to do flow control of that returning oil to the, to the case, we could put a stroke limiter or a volume limit in right there. How do you do that? Well, you can re you remove the control, take the control off, take it off, take the spring and so forth out, pull the spool out, and then you have your orifice on the end of your Allen wrench, and you go up through the bottom of the control, through the tank port, and screw the orifice in. The orifice screws in, it's tightened. Now we can uh, put all the parts back together in it, the spool back in, the adjustment and the springs, put the control back on the pump. And depending on whether you broke the jam nut and the spring tension, you may not even have to reset the pump. But now if we look at the control when this pump comes on stroke and return oil out of the stroking piston comes up, around, over, 
Now it must pass through this flow limiting orifice. It slows the pump down from maybe double the response time uh, from the uh, 25 to 50 milliseconds up to uh, 50 to 100 milliseconds. Once again, depending on the size and displacement of the pump. That is, you say, well, here's the, here's the complete control. Don't need to bother with the top one. This is the compensated one. Take it out. You will have spring, a follower, and the spool. You are now ready to put your orifice plug up in there, screw it in, take it out. Put the spool back in, and we're put it back on the pump. Don't forget your spring follower. Tighten all this back down. Control goes back on the pump. And you have now solved your cavitation problem on your AA10 VSO pressure compensated pump.